Welcome to Vancouver Graveyard, Part 4. Today we're visiting the famous graves as requested by you, the viewers. We're starting our tour in the green pastures of Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Burnaby. Paul and many others requested that we remember Ron Tabak. Ron was born in Alberta in 1953, an extremely talented singer. Ron is best known as the original lead vocalist for the phenomenal rock band Prism. Formed in Vancouver in 1977, Prism was named Group of the Year in 1981 Juno Awards. Ron and his bandmates first recorded albums inside the famous Mushroom Studios, which was in this building on West 6th in Vancouver. Ron is in fine form in the song Spaceship Superstar off Prism's first album. Written by the incredibly kind Jim Valance, it was the wake-up song for astronauts on the Space Shuttle Discovery in 2011. On a snowy Christmas Eve in 1984, Ron was riding his bicycle to a buddy's house. He was struck by a car and passed away on Christmas Day. He was 31 years old. Ron Tabak's grave includes a picture of him singing. His phenomenal voice and amazing music are available for sale on iTunes. Next, we're visiting two graves in Vancouver's beautiful Mountain View Cemetery. Mama Jay and many others requested that we remember Janet Smith. Janet was born in Scotland in 1902. In 1923, she came to Vancouver working as a nanny for a wealthy and socially elite family. They moved into a house on Osler Street in the exclusive Shaughnessy Heights neighborhood. On July 26, 1924, Janet's body was found in the basement here. A coroner's inquest determined that the 22-year-old died from a self-inflicted but accidental death. The case became very suspicious, and at a second inquest, the jury found that Janet had been murdered. There were rumors of a cover-up, and sensational events followed, including the kidnapping and torture of the houseboy. The case remains unsolved and has inspired many books and articles. The Council of Scottish Societies erected Janet's memorial here. It says she met her death while in the bloom of youth, on earth, one gentle soul less. In heaven, one angel more. I visited a few days after the 96th anniversary of her death. There were flowers and gifts here. People still remember sweet Janet Smith. Peter requested that we remember George Thorburn. Born in England in 1875, George was a motorman on the new interurban rail line linking Vancouver with New Westminster. On November 9, 1909, George's passenger car Sumas was heading east. He was at the Lakeview station at Victoria Drive. Up ahead, a flat car heavily loaded with timbers uncoupled from its train and rolled backwards towards the Sumas. In the violent impact, the timber shot off the flat car and demolished the Sumas. 15 people were killed, including George. He was 34 years old. 12 of the victims are interred here at Mountain View with this wonderful man. Today, the accident site is the lovely Cedar Cottage Community Garden. The garden shed here is a three-quarter scale replica of the old train station that was here from 1900 to 1935. The Vancouver Heritage Foundation has a plaque here commemorating the worst transit accident in Vancouver's history. His impressive memorial stone says, George Thorburn, killed in tram accident at Lakeview. Our last stop today is the benevolent Ocean View Burial Park where we're visiting four graves. First, Ian requested that we remember his grandma, Viva Moore, better known by her nickname, Vi. 
Born on Salt Spring Island in 1901, Vi and her husband Bob managed Vi's Chicken and Steakhouse at 209 Union Street in Vancouver's Hogan's Alley from the 1940s to the 1970s. It was in the main floor of an old house, and the food was good. Really good. The best baking soda biscuits in the world. Vi never forgot an order, even as she talked with customers about sports and politics. Vi respected everyone. There was a jukebox with great music, and nobody cared if he had a bottle under the table. After a performance in Vancouver, the world's top entertainers came to Vi's, which was open to 4 a.m. Stars like Sammy Davis Jr., Louis Armstrong, and Cab Calloway. And they loved Vi. If she went to see one of their shows, she got the best table right in front of the stage. The Vancouver Heritage Foundation plaque is at the location, but the building is gone now except for a little shed that was attached. Vi employed another incredible woman named Nora Hendricks. In recent years, this little shack has been a shrine to Nora's grandson, Jimi Hendrix. Here's a picture on the door of Jimmy and Nora in front of Vi's. And here's a photo of Lena Horn and friends inside. I found Vi in the listings. And her house built in 1941 still looks great. What a wonderful kitchen that must have been for Vi's family. Vi Moore passed away in 1975. Her memorial stone says, Beloved mom, grandma, and great grandma, always loved and remembered. Stefano requested that we remember Dominic Mobilio. Born in Vancouver in 1969, Dominic was an extremely gifted soccer player from an early age. When he was nine years old, he was invited to play in Mexico. Growing up, he won many provincial and national championships. He scored in his first professional game and went on to score 170 professional goals in 14 seasons. He is the second highest scorer in North American professional soccer history. Dominic was a six-time league all-star and MVP in 1990. He was a fan favorite when he played for the Vancouver 86ers and Vancouver Whitecaps. He's in multiple halls of fame and the Whitecaps retired as number 10. Every year, the Whitecaps top scorer receives the Dominic Mobilio Golden Boot. And in Coquitlam, this is the Dominic Mobilio Field. On November 13, 2004, Dominic Mobilio passed away from a sudden heart attack. He was 35 years old. Dmitry requested that we remember Alexei Romanov. In 1918, Nicholas II, the Emperor of Russia, was executed along with his family. The bodies were eventually recovered except for two of the children, Anastasia and Alexei. The man who was interred here claimed to be Alexei, the last heir to the Russian throne. When he passed away in 1977, his obituary in the paper confirmed that he was in fact the Grand Duke. People were intrigued with the mystery until 2007, when the official remains of Alexei and Anastasia were finally discovered. It is now believed that the man interred here was Ernest Virman from Estonia. However, his memorial plaque still reads, His Imperial Highness, Sovereign Heir, Tsarevich, and Grand Duke of Russia. He captured the world's imagination, and I say, we let Alexei rest in peace with his preferred distinction. Our final grave today was requested by Jake and many others. This is the final resting place of Brian Too Loud McLeod. Born in Nova Scotia in 1952, Brian was interested in music from a young age. In 1978, he was asked to join the band Chilliwack. The band hit superstardom with the 1981 record, Wanna Be a Star. Brian is credited with vocals, drums, keyboard, and guitar. The album features the number one hit song, My Girl, co-written by Brian and recorded in Vancouver. 40 years later, fans love hearing Brian sing, Gone, Gone, Gone. After Chilliwack, Brian joined the successful band The Headpins. Brian's incredible music is available for sale on iTunes. Brian McLeod lost his battle with cancer in 1992. He was 39 years old. His memorial stone cites his family, friends, and fans. Like all of the incredible people we honored today, I bet Brian would have been happy we remembered him.
And that completes our tour. Please check out my other Vancouver Graveyard tours celebrating our dearly departed. Hope you enjoyed this little taste of old Vancouver as she once was. Thank you for watching. Please like and subscribe. Until next time, as my late grandpa used to say, be good to the other.